Bible study. Tonight we're going to try to finish Acts chapter 12. Uh, of course, tonight's lesson title is Peter's Arrest and Deliverance, Part 2. So we're actually going to pick up from there. Before we get started, let's do a little bit of a uh, review. Peter was arrested uh, for preaching the gospel. Uh, he was thrown in prison. This was Peter's third time he had been thrown in prison. If you study the scriptures out, uh, he was surrounded by four quadrants of soldiers, which would have been 16 soldiers. Uh, an angel come to Peter. Peter was released from prison. Uh, all this, while all this going on, the church was praying that Peter's release would happen. So as we step back into Acts chapter 12 here, we'll, we'll pick up at verse 13, and we'll notice here that uh, what happens while the church is praying. God, God actually answers this prayer very fast and very quickly. So let's pick back up at verse 12, or excuse me, 13. Acts chapter 12, verse 13, if you guys want to join in. Uh, when he knocked at the door of the gate, a servant girl named Rhoda came to answer. So we see here, Peter goes, of course, to Mary's house. If you guys remember last week when we closed at verse 12 here in 13, uh, Mary is the mother of Mark, uh, the author of the book of Mark, okay? Um, this is Mark who wrote the book of Mark, like I said, uh, they were gathered, the Christians were gathered together in his home because at this place they didn't have a church. They were using homes uh, as their congregation to worship. As Peter knocked on the door of the gate, a female named Rhoda answered the door. Okay. Verse 14. When she recognized Peter's voice, because of her joy, she did not open the gate, but ran in and announced that Peter was standing in front of the gate. So we see here, there's a couple of things happens in this verse. All right. She recognized Peter's voice. She knew it was Peter on the other side of the gate. All right. But the Bible says here, because of her joy, she did not open the gate. Remember, they were the Christians were in there praying for Peter's release from prison. God answered his prayer. And let's see how the Christians react here. But she did not open the gate because, again, for the joy in her heart that Peter was actually here, she got so overwhelmed by it, she actually ran, ran back into the house and announced that Peter was standing at the gate. All right. Verse 15. They said to her, You are out of your mind. But she kept insisting that it was so. They kept saying, It's an angel. So the Christians here did not even though they were praying for this prayer. I guess at this point, they didn't expect God to answer this prayer as quickly as he did. But here, once God answered the prayer, what, what did the Christians do? They wasn't rejoicing. They pretty much were arguing with Rhoda. Said, well, that's not Peter at the gate. He's locked up in jail. Uh, you're seeing an angel. You're hearing an angel. This is Peter's angel. This is not Peter. So the Christians did not believe that Peter could be released that quickly. So they, they actually believed it was an angel. All right. We see here a couple of things in this verse here. They first say, you are out of your mind. In other words, you're mad. You, you don't know what you're talking about here. But she kept insisting that it was so... So they kept, there, there was an argument going on right here. You can see an argument right here. Uh, she would say, no, it's Peter. The church members would say, no, no, it's not Peter. Peter's locked up in jail. No, it's not Peter. You, 
If you've heard Peter's voice, you've heard, this is an angel. This is not Peter. All right. What should they have done? Well, they should have got up and went and let Peter through the gate. Okay? They should have had that trust and faith in God that God answers prayers. Sometimes we as Christians, when God doesn't answer a prayer, we're, we're, we're wondering why or, well, God, why is it taking this long? Sometimes Sometimes we pray amiss. The Bible tells us that. Sometimes we've got to wait upon God. Well, at this point, I'm assuming that's what these Christians thought. There's no way God has answered this prayer this quickly. All right? So verse 16 here says, But Peter continued knocking, and when they had opened the door, they saw him and were amazed. In other words, they couldn't believe their eyes. Peter continued to knock to get in, but once the Christians opened the door, they couldn't believe their eyes. They couldn't believe this is Peter. How did God do this? Sometimes, folks, we underestimate God and his powers. Verse 17. All right. But motioning to them with his hand to be silent, first of all, why would Peter do this? Because, think about it, they would have been such joy in that house. The Bible doesn't tell us how many Christians are gathered here. They were loud. They would have been so loud with joy. What would that do? Well, that would get Rome's attention. If there were Roman centurions, guards outside this house, that would get some attention. That would raise some eyebrows. Somebody would come and investigate. So here, Peter tells him, he motions his hand and says, look, be silent. He says, he described to them how the Lord had led him out of prison. And he said, report these things to James and the brethren. All right. Then he left and went another place. All right. Let's, let, there's quite a bit here in this verse. Let's look at it. Verse 17, again, Peter here gave God all the glory. Before we break this verse down, he doesn't say, look what I've done, look what prayer's done. He gives God the full glory, which should be done. Peter stated that here to everybody to be quiet, listen to me, and I'll tell you what Jesus has done for me, okay? Peter, after he tells them how miraculous this miracle was, and it was a miracle. When he gets out, he tells them, he says, listen to what I've got to tell you. He gives God the glory. Okay. The next thing he does here is he said, report these things to James and the brethren. All right. First of all, who's James? All right. This is Jesus's brother. Okay. James is one of the leaders in Jerusalem. When the church is formed, James will be one of the leaders here. Peter wanted James to know and his other brethren, in other words, the, 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 the disciples. He wanted them to understand. The church leaders, he wanted them to understand. He wanted them to understand that he's out and this is God's glory. God is using him. And why, why did Peter move on? All right. Then he left and went another way. Peter departs here to get away from Herod's tyranny. God has called him. It's time for you to move. I've got other places for you to be, and I've got other things for you to do. See, God was not done with Peter yet. God was going to use Peter just like he used Paul. We're going to see next chapter, we're going to see Paul's first missionary journeys. Remember, I told you guys last week, there's three missionary journeys and then there's a fourth journey to Rome. The rest of the book of Acts will be about Paul and his journeys, and we'll get into that next week. But right now, we see how God is using Peter here. All right, let's read verses 18 and 19, and then we'll talk about them. Now, when day came, there was no small disturbance among the soldiers as to what could happen have become of Peter. All right. First of all, why would the soldiers be so concerned? Because if Peter had escaped, 
Herod the king is going to hold them soldiers accountable, and he's going to kill them soldiers. If a, back, back then, if a prisoner escaped, the soldiers, which would be the Roman guards, the ones that guards the prison, they're responsible. Somebody had to die for that. Okay, So that's why there was no small disturbance. In other words, it was a big rigmarole about Peter. Why in the world? Where is Peter at? How did Peter get by us? Remember, God put these jailers in a trance when he let Peter out. Verse 19, when Herod had searched for him, in other words, Peter, and had not found him, he examined the guards and ordered that they be led away to execution. Then he went down from Judea to Caesarea and was spending time there. All right, let's look at these two verses. At daylight, the soldiers were in uproar. They couldn't find Peter. They knew their lives were on the line if they could not come up with this man called Peter. The jailers knew if Peter was not found, they would be put to death. So, of course, Herod finds out Peter's gone, Peter's escaped, so Herod questions the jailers to where Peter is. Herod ordered the jailers to be killed, and then the Bible says here, he left for Caesar, Caesarea. Herod left Judea to travel to Caesarea. All right, now, verses 20 through 25, we're going to see the death of Herod here. All right. Now, verse 20. Now he was very angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon, and with one accord they came to him, and having won over Blastus, the king's chamberlain, they were asking for peace because their country was fed by the king's country. All right, let's look at this first. Tyre and Sidon were trading centers of the Romans and, of course, the inhabitants of Galilee here. The Bible doesn't really specifically say why Herod was displeased here with these two places. But we do see here that these two places evidently bribed Blastus. Of course, he was the king's chamberlain. He was part of the king's court. And, and had great influence, who, excuse me, Blastus had great influence over Herod. Their country was gaining from these two trading areas. So we see it all boils down here to money and trade in these two, in these two uh, towns here. All right, verse 21. On an appointed day, Herod, having put on his royal apparel, apparel, excuse me, took his seat on the rostrum and began delivering an address to them. So, what does Herod do here? He puts on his royal attire and he sits down and he makes a physical speech to these people. Now, you're going to see something here happen. And you're going to see why Herod dies here. Okay? Verse 22. The people kept crying out, the voice of God and not of a man. In other words, the people were listening to Herod here delivering an address to him. And the, the people kept crying out. In other words, this is a voice of a God. This is not of a man. All right, they made a very bold statement here, folks, the people did. He, they made a statement saying, this is a voice of a God, not of a man. All right, what does Harry do here about this? Nothing, and we're going to see here. What should Harry have done? He said, I'm not, I'm not a God, I'm the king, but Harry does none of this. All right, verse 23. I want you to look at this verse. And immediately. When? Immediately. An angel of the Lord struck him because he did not give God the glory. And he was eaten by worms and died. 
immediately God killed Herod because after the people made this statement, Herod did not stop them and give God himself the glory. Herod tried to take God's glory from him. He was eaten by worms as he was dying. Think about that, folks. Think about that. Verse 24. But the word of the Lord continued to grow and be multiplied. So the Bible shows us time and time again here in the history of the Acts of the Apostles, which is the book of Acts, that God was growing his church. Some of these men had extraordinary powers through the Lord. And he took that to grow his church. You've got to remember, they were transitioning from the law to the hour of grace. So we see here how God's word continued to grow and multiply. Folks, God's word today continues to grow and multiply because of the men and women that God's called to do his will are following what God's ordered them to do. All right, verse 25, and we'll close with this verse. A little short tonight, but we're finishing this uh, chapter up. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their mission taking along with them John, who was also called Mark. So we see here how Paul, Saul and Barnabas fills their mission, fulfills it, does what God calls them, they return, and God is, course, is going to prepare them to start their first missionary journey coming up here in Acts chapter 13. Folks, as Christians, we have a job to do. We're to, we're to teach and tell others about the Lord. Folks, all of us are not teachers. All of us are not preachers. But if we're Christians, pray about it. God has given us. There's, there's talents. There's gifts God will give us. Your gift might not be the same as your spouse's gift or your brother's or sister's gift, but God will give you a gift to fulfill his mission. What is God's mission as a Christian? We're to carry the gospel out to the lost. We're to teach and tell others about the Lord. We're to take this Bible, which is our roadmap, and we're to carry out that mission. We're to teach and tell others about what God has done in our lives and prepare other people so they can get their lives right and they can, uh, they can serve. And that's our job as Christians to serve. Tonight, if, if you're not a Christian, I want to invite you tonight to become a Christian. Folks, it's not hard. It's not a hard thing to accomplish. If God's been dealing with you, if God is, if if you if you if you hear my voice right now, and God has been dealing with you about getting in church, if God has been dealing with you to dedicate and turn your life over to Him, maybe you need to rededicate your life. Maybe you've been a Christian uh, in the past and 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 fell away from the Lord. Maybe it's time for you to step back up. Maybe God's been dealing with you. Maybe God's been dealing with your heart that you need to to rededicate your life to him. Folks, I'm going to give you that opportunity right now to do that. If you're not a Christian, I'm going to give you that opportunity. I'm going to say a prayer here in a minute, and I ask that you join in with me, and God will save you. And there's some things you need to look at. Uh, like I said before, there's three things you must do to become a saved Christian. First thing you must do, and the most important thing, is you have to admit your sin and ask God for that forgiveness. Okay? You have to believe in your heart that Jesus Christ 
died on the cross for, for sin, rose again the third day and was victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And you have to make an, a, com, a commitment through Jesus by faith. So I want to give you a couple of verses here. And write these down. These are very important verses about salvation. And this is Paul writing to the Roman church. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. That if you confess with your mouth that Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says you will be saved. It's God's promise. He tells us right here, you must confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord. And you must believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. The Bible promises you if you believe this and you confess this to, G, to the Lord through Jesus that you will be saved. That's the promise. Verse 10, for with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. See, there's a difference between us today, folks, and these disciples. These disciples right here that are preaching God's word, that are teaching God's word right now. Peter is a fine example. He walked and talked with Christ. Christ prepared him for what was to come. He, Christ let him know, look, I'm going to die on the cross. I'm going to raise again the third day. You're going to carry this gospel out into all the world. So there's a difference with Peter. Peter didn't live by faith, he lived by sight. See, we live by faith, okay? The Bible says our reward is even greater. So think about that, folks. So let's bow our head and let's pray. And like I said, if you're lost, you don't know the Lord, please say the prayer with me if God's calling on you tonight. Uh, same as if you, if you fell away from the Lord. Rededicate your life to him. All right. Let's, let's pray. Father God, Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you tonight, Lord, for Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for allowing him to come, Lord, to prepare his disciples, to prepare them to carry out and fulfill, Lord, your word. Thank you tonight, Lord, for the Bible. Thank you, Father, for the word. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a way of escape from hell. Father God, I come to you tonight, Lord, and I pray if there's anyone, Lord, under the sound of my voice that doesn't know you, I pray, Father, they say this prayer with me tonight, Lord, and they become saved and become a disciple, Lord, to serve you. Lord Jesus, I ask you tonight, Father, to come into my heart. First of all, Lord, I believe your son died on the cross. I believe he rose again the third day, victorious over death, hell, and the grave, Lord. And I believe in my heart this. And I ask you tonight, Lord, to come into my heart and save me, Lord, that I may go out and teach and tell others about you, Lord, that I may go out, Lord, that you will work with me, Father God, the coming days that I'll pick your word up and I'll study it, Lord, and you will be with me. I pray tonight, Father God, that you will save me, and I thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me tonight. Father God, this and all things I ask in Jesus Christ's holy name, amen. If you said that prayer tonight, Lord, or anyone, if you said that prayer, God will save you. If you said that prayer, you're saved. Now, what's the next step? What, what is the next step as a new Christian. What is the next step for someone that's rededicating their life to the Lord? The next step is find a church and get involved. Get in church, dive into God's word, study God's word, learn God's word. Through the spirit, he will guide you folks. And Again, if you live in Norton, surrounding areas, I would like to invite you to Esherville Community Church. Uh, you're welcome there anytime. And if you live away from that area, find you a church and get in it. If you're a Christian, if you've been saved 
and you you enjoy the study. If you're not in church, folks, let's find a church and let's get involved. Let's get involved. Is it important for us to be in church? Absolutely. God, matter of fact, God gives us a command. We are too as Christians to go to church. You know, like I said, I've heard, I've had, I've had several Christians tell me that, you know, I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. I don't have to go to church to be saved. Well, part of that's true. Part of it's not. And I'm going to explain that to you. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10 and look at verse 25. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25 in the New Testament. I'll give everybody a chance to get there. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Now, the writer here tells us in verse 25. Now listen to this. Of course, the writer here is telling us what we are to do, how we love one another, uh, pray for one another. Verse 25 says, Not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. In other words, as Christians, folks, how can we grow strong as Christians? We have to get into God's Word. We have to gather together. The Bible tells us as Christians we're to bear one another's burdens. How can we do that if we're not in church? We can't. And Sunday school... A Bible study, folks, is, is just as important as, as the preaching is. Sometimes, as a, as a preacher preaches, that message not might only be dealing with a certain individual or certain individuals. It might not have nothing to do with you that Sunday. But I can grant you every Sunday, if there's a Bible study going on, it has something to do with you. If there's a Wednesday night Bible study, it has something to do with you. So, again, I would like to invite everyone that will, uh, let's get out, let's, let's teach and tell others about the Lord and what the Lord does for us. And again, uh, if everyone would, I would appreciate it if you would like and share so God's Word gets out. And, and if, again, if, if you want to do a private message to me, you can do through Messenger, Junior Tate. Uh, if you have any questions about salvation, if you if the, if you said that prayer tonight, and you need prayer, or if you need to speak to me, you know, you can do a private message. I'll be more than happy to respond. Uh, again, thanks, thank everybody for joining in. I appreciate the Bible study. I appreciate the dedication of people that gets on. If you would please invite someone next Tuesday night. Invite one friend to join in with you, and let's do Bible study together. Let's carry God's Word out. Everyone have a blessed Tuesday night. Thank you.